Hi guys, back with another video for you today and I'm shooting in a complete different location. I hope you like this look. It's very bright here in this room and also sunny. It's all windows. And I'm here to announce four new fragrances from the house of Keali. Brand new, very kind of an exclusive collection that are only going to be sold online. And they're oud focused fragrances called Oudgasm. We've got Vanilla Oud 36, this one right here. We have Cafe Oud 19, this one right here. We have Rose Oud 16, this one right here. And then we have Tobacco Oud 04, this one right here. So I'm going to tell you all about these fragrances in this video and these will be dropping on the 1st of October so you should look for them when they're launching. I've got an announcement to make in the video about how you can get to sample these fragrances. So find out all about this coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today I'm talking about the Oudgasm collection of fragrances from the house of Keali. There are four of them. There's the vanilla, the cafe, the rose, and then of course the tobacco. Can you guess my favorite out of the four? Let me know, put a comment down. I'll tell you at the end of the video in the order of which ones I like the most. But these are now going to be selling on the first online at Sephora and Huda Beauty. So they're only coming in 50 ml bottles. They're not going to be in the traditional 100. I believe there's also a smaller size available than the 50, but no 100 mls for these four fragrances. So there's the vanilla, there's the cafe, there's the rose, and then there's the tobacco. And these are coming in Eau de Parfum Intense Concentration. They have a lot of intensity with them. The fragrances are created with Hamid Maradi Kashani and with Vanilla Oud, it's along with Gabriella Chilaru, who I believe has been creating the fragrances of KLE quite a bit. In regards to the Cafe Oud, definitely it is created by Hamid Maradi Kashani. The Rose Oud 16 is also created by Hamid Maradi Kashani. And then finally, the Tobacco Oud 04 is created by Philippine Courtier. So these uh, perfumers are Fermanish perfumers. And I think Philippine Courtier used to work for another firm before. Before I thought she was with Simrise, but she must have moved on to uh, Fermanish. But really great fragrances with these. They're oud focused. And uh, you know, I've been mentioning in my videos and I'm a bit bored of oud, but I like the idea of these fragrances. And you'll find out which ones I like the most. I'll let you know at the end of the video. But why don't we go ahead and talk about Vanilla Oud 36 first, this one right here. So this fragrance is created by Hamid Maradi Kashani. And then of course, mostly main perfumer, Gabriella Chelaru, I believe. I've seen her name for a lot of the fragrances for Kali, but this one she collaborated with Hamid Maradi Kashani. And if I haven't mentioned already, man, uh, Hamid Maradi Kashani is having the year of years, I think. He's gotten so many fragrances out now. The uh, King Blue from Amouage, he did the, the new Parfums of Marley, and I've seen his name come up in way too many fragrances. So he's getting a, a lot of stuff done, and here we've got the three different fragrances. But this is Vanilla Oud 36. I think it's the softest out of the four fragrances. And Vanilla Oud 36 features notes of pear, Praline, saffron for top notes, heart notes features, Bulgarian rose. Finally, in the base notes, we've got cashmere wood, vanilla sugar, white musk, oak moss, and oud. Of course, this is an oud-focused collection of fragrances, the Oudgasm collection. And this one does seem the most gourmand out of them. It does eventually get oudy. There's a very distinct smell with oud in fragrances. It's not necessarily woods, but it is a woody note. But there's this very unique characteristic with the oud that is definitely prominent here with all of the fragrances. So the oud does stand out. But for me, in this one, it's interesting, when you first spray this one, it does smell vanillic, but the oud is pretty prominent as well. But what happens is it does eventually soften up and gets even oudier when it's drying down. Eventually you're drying down to kind of a vanillic, sugary, kind of a oudy woody thing. But it, it appears up top and I feel like it makes an appearance, disappears, and then appears again on the dry down. But for me, this is definitely very vanillic and I think the vanilla is toned down. It doesn't get uber sweet, sugary because of the oud in here and a few other notes in here as well. For me, I've smelled vanillic fragrances that are a lot sugarier and, and sweeter and syrupier. This one is sweet, but again, the oud tones it down and to kind of balance it out and not make it extremely sweet. But let's go ahead and take a quick whiff of this one and smell it and I'll give you a few more thoughts about it. 
How many of you like the idea of vanilla and oud together? Ooh, I think you can see the, the, the sprays in the air. I've never shot in a scene like this, in a setting like this. It's very bright here and it's also a bit warm. But here we've got this softness up top and also a bit of leather that comes in as well, the spicy leathery touch of saffron. Uh, it does get very powdery. This is a very powdery fragrance and I feel like the majority of the collection does have a powdery, uh, you know, edge to them. But this is really gorgeous. I really like the fact that it's a kind of diet, kind of a vanilla. It's vanillic, but it's balanced out with the oudiness of the the oud so it does kind of tone it down and appears there i should also say these are not necessarily uber animalic but i think some people associate oud with animalic notes even the stuff that's not necessarily animalic in general there's definitely a bit of a funkiness here and if you're typically used to just vanilla on its own this might come off a bit animalic until you start you know familiarizing yourself with oud as a note to me this one's not necessarily animalic but there's definitely muskiness there and then also some kind of, um, there's, there's a little bit of a funk. I'm not saying it's an animalic funk. I think it's just the oud creating it. So this is gorgeous. It's a really beautiful, very uh, kind of gourmand edge oud fragrance. And I think this should satisfy to folks that like vanilla and oud together. Uh, yeah, I think, I think you're going to enjoy this one, especially if you like those notes. It's a... Uh, toned down sweet gourmand notes and I think it's toned down because of the 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 oud note in here. So the next one I'm going to talk to you about is Cafe Oud 19, this one right here. So I should just say now this is my favorite of the collection. I really like the cafe here and I feel like the oud is there but there's something earthy about coffee in general especially when it comes to it in the form of grounds. So I think the oud complements that note pretty nicely and creates a really gorgeous fragrance here. So this fragrance is created by Hamid Muradi Kashani. He did two on his own. The first one with Gabriela Chalaru and the last one he's not involved with. It's Philippine Courtier. But uh, Oudgasm Cafe Oud 19 features notes of bergamot, mandarin, cappuccino for top notes. Heart notes or middle notes features geranium and rose damascena. Finally, in the dry down or the base notes, we've got vanilla Madagascar, white musk, patchouli, and oud. So I think there's something familiar about this one and I quite enjoy it because of that reason. For me, I should say, it does remind me a little bit of Café Tuberosa from the House of Atelier Cologne. So if you're a fan of that one, you should check this one. But this one definitely does feature the oud and there's no tuberose here. So it's the rosiness that I'm getting in here mixed with the coke the coffee note. In this case, they're saying it's cappuccino. I'm not necessarily getting much of a milkiness because cappuccino I drink all the time. It's got milk in it, but I'm not getting that milkiness, but there might be some kind of a light milky edge to it. For me, this one is not as powdery as the vanilla, but it, there's definitely a powdery effect happening here as well. And then in the end, it does sweeten up and, and the dry down. You've got, uh, you know, some patchouli in there, which I like. It's one of the reasons why I enjoy this one the most. It's just that patchouli kind of comes up and it does kind of, you know, give me that familiar smelling experience to something like a Cafe Tuberosa, which is discontinued, by the way. So if you like that fragrance without the tuberose, because the Cafe Tuberosa did have the, the rose featured in there. It had the coffee, of course, and it had patchouli. So this is kind of acting like that. And that's kind of what I like about it. So this one's kind of gourmand, but that... I feel like the vanilla oud is more gourmand than the cafe oud, but uh, it's just uh, what I think and how I'm experiencing these fragrances. You might think cafe oud is a, a lot more gourmand than uh, the vanilla oud, but uh, this one's uh, super delicious and I can't get enough of. So let me go ahead and uh, quickly spray it and smell it for you on camera. This is just amazing. I absolutely love this one. That familiar smell, the patchouli in here is quite prominent. Really, really love it. The oud, I feel like, is also not necessarily a lot in your face. It stood out more so far in the vanilla oud. Here, it's blended in a way, kind of, I think it kind of tricks me to acting more like a ground coffee. And in this case, as I said, they do mention cappuccino. I'm not getting much of a milkiness with this one. It's more about coffee coffee grounds dry maybe a bit of drip you know drip like it's brewed coffee but for me since it's a dry fragrance i'm experiencing more of a 
you know, coffee grounds experience. There's some juiciness for sure. The rose does come in, and that's what I like about it. And then when they put the geranium and the, the, the rose in the heart, because there's definitely a rosiness that appears from the geranium. It, it does accentuate the rosiness in the, the heart notes. But this one's uh, super amazing. I could wear this night and day. It smells great. And I like the fact that I can find a, you know, something that smells kind of like a Cafe Tuberosa here and uh, really enjoy that kind of uh, coffee-like gourmandish floral rose uh, oud kind of a thing. And in this one, I should also mention again, the patchouli is quite prominent so you're definitely going to notice it and i think it's because of this that i like this one the most i love patchouli and fragrances so it's a given this one uh, is the one that i resonated with the most so this is uh, oudgasm cafe oud 19. okay the next fragrance i'm talking about is the rose oud 16 this one right here again this is a fragrance created by hamid Muradi kashani he did three of them as i said earlier but this one he did on his own this fragrance features notes of pear, lemon, geranium for top notes. Heart notes features Bulgarian rose and peony. And finally in the dry down or base notes, we've got vanilla Madagascar, cashmere, wood, and oud. So this is your typical combo of oud and rose together. And for some reason, oud and rose together is a great combo. They play wonderfully together, these notes. They do balance each other out, the rose being the feminine, the oud being the masculine and yeah i think this combo works great i've smelled plenty of uh wood and rose combo fragrances and i do enjoy quite a bit of here we've got a fragrance created by hamid Muradi kashani and i know he does great oud fragrances he just did king blue for amouage and he's done I, I know one oud rose combo fragrance he's done for parfums de marley called the caster so we've got one here for kali and he's done a great job with this one this one i believe is going to be available for you to sample at Harrods. So this is probably one of the only ones that you can go into a store and smell. Obviously, a lot of us can't access this fragrance in person because we don't live in London or we're not traveling there to be able to go and sample it. But if you like the idea of Rose Nude, you should definitely check this one out. I like this one, the fact that it does get floral and it does have that familiar smell with the Rose Nude combo. And here with this one, we do have a light fruitiness and I like the whole combination of the peony in the heart with the rose. And these two notes do also contribute to it wonderfully together. Like geranium rose, they do balance each other out because there's a rosiness with the geranium and that was in the last fragrance. With this one, the peony also balances it out. Peony is a softer smell to me, does have rosy nuances. So it's a given that they would combine it here to create a more of a floral rosy boost to the heart notes. But eventually it does get oody when it's drying down and it's again, the wonderful marriage of rose and oud together. So let's go ahead and quickly sniff this one and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It does get a bit musky when it's drying down, I should say, but it's definitely a nice balance of the rose and the oud together. I think this is a great combo and it works. So in here, we've got your very Middle Eastern smell of the oud. I feel like the oud in this one is not the same as some of the oud in, like especially the first fragrance. The oud is a bit different in that I'm not sure what kind of oud they're using. They're calling it oud. Sometimes people report the type of oud they use in fragrances, but mostly it says oud in all of these fragrances. Also, I should say there's a bit of a saffron edge here and they're not mentioning saffron in the notes but I find this note quite a bit in rose oud combo fragrances and the saffron does really add a nice leathery edge to fragrances, especially when it's oud focused fragrances. But again, really wonderful offering. It starts a bit fruity and fresh up top, eventually it gets right to the rose. But since the oud is so dominant, you can start smelling the oud right off the bat and eventually it dries down to become a more concentrated form of oud a bit sweetness from vanilla it lightly kind of gourmand edge here with the vanilla and of course muskiness from the cashmere uh wood note as well yeah this is a nice uh oudy rose fragrance uh, and uh, this is rose oud 16 the third fragrance and then last but not least we've got tobacco oud 4 this one right here so tobacco oud 4 it's tobacco and oud. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about something. You might be interested in this one, so pay attention. But this is a fragrance created by Philippine Cortier and it features notes of mandarin, clary sage, plum, white honey, geranium for top notes. Heart notes features cloves and saffron. Finally, in the dry down or the base notes, we've got tobacco, patchouli, vanilla, benzoin, praline, and oud. So this is my second favorite of the bunch. I really like this one, because guess what it reminds me of? 
Tom Ford's discontinued or very hard to find tobacco oud. They're not similar, but there's that familiarity and reminder of that fragrance. I'm obsessed with tobacco oud, so this one is my second favorite and also probably might come off the most animalic. So those of you that are more familiar with uh, or used to wearing sweet fragrances and things like that, this might be a bit overwhelming. I think it's the strongest in the collection. Also the most complex. It has a lot of things happening, layers upon layers of things happening. And also the fact that it's tobacco, there's that whole dirty, ashy tobacco smell. This is not like vanilla, I mean, this is not like, a, what, what, should, what should I say? Tobacco vanille from Tom Ford. And even though you've got that whole dirty, ashy tobacco in that fragrance, it's nicely balanced out with the vanilla. There's a lot of vanilla in that fragrance, so it's you know, tones down the dirtiness. But here, we really have something kind of animalic, a bit sweaty, really, really playing like it might be kind of animalic notes uh, in here. So I feel like also the oud might contribute to, you know, creating this kind of dirtiness. So this is a bit more daring than the rest of the collection, and I should say be cautious about this one. But if you've gotten your nose on tobacco oud and you love that from Tom Ford, as I said, this is probably going to satisfy you because it does kind of come off a bit like that. They're not identical fragrances. I think the idea is the same. That is called tobacco oud. This is tobacco oud for, and of course you're, you're focusing on two notes, tobacco and oud. And this, this one doesn't get as gourmand as the others do. And I feel like the vanilla that's in here, that benzoin that's in here, does tone it down a little bit but they're not the highlight notes here. I think a lot of the rough notes are more highlights in here. The oud for sure. We've got the saffron in here creating a bit of a leathery touch. But in the end, it's a dirty, ashy tobacco combined with all the other notes. It does wear pretty rough. I'll be warning you about that one. But again, this is my second favorite. So my two favorites are the Cafe Oud and also the Tobacco Oud. And they're completely different fragrances. The Cafe Oud to me is more gourmand edge but more of a woody gourmand, not necessarily uber sweet. But the tobacco oud is definitely rough. It's a bit more animalic and I really like it because tobacco oud from Tom Ford is uh, one of my favorite fragrances from Tom Ford. So now we've got a fragrance that's a lot easier to get. Again, not all of you are gonna think it's similar to Tom Ford's tobacco oud, which is very hard to find. I get the connection, not only because it's called tobacco oud, but also it does kind of smell like it a little bit. They're not identical though, just being upfront about it. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this collection. It's debuting on the first. I'm telling you about it here. Now to that surprise. So again, as I was saying earlier, you're not gonna be able to sample these because they're not gonna be in stores. The rose is going to appear at Harrods, the rose oud, and you'll be able to sample it there. But uh, that's pretty much it, I believe. The rest of the collection is going to be just online exclusives and they only come in 50 mLs and you can't go to a Sephora to sample it, see if you like it and things like that. So here's where the surprise comes in. So I really enjoyed these fragrances and when Kayali asked me if I wanted to feature these fragrances in Scent Club, and I said, yes, I would love to. I had to make sure I got my nose on them first to find out all about them. And very soon we're going to drop these fragrances in a Scent Club kit, which is going to be now the official kit number seven. So this is the kit that's, I, I would say, kind of hijacked by Kayali. And I believe you're only gonna be able to sample these via the Scent Club kit. Most of you will not be able to, as I said, travel to London to go sample the Rose Oud fragrance. So we're only doing around 325 to 350 kits and stay tuned for more information about uh, the uh, Scent Club kits. But either way, guys, that's all I have for you here today on this collection of new Kayali Oud-focused fragrances called Oudgasm. Vanilla Oud 36, this one. Cafe Oud 19, this one. Got Rose Oud 16, this one. Then finally, Tobacco Oud 04, this one. Again, Tobacco Oud is the most animalic out of the bunch. Be cautious with that one, but I think Anybody that's into oud should enjoy all of these. The rougher you, go, you like the, your ouds, you should go with the tobacco. The sweeter you like your ouds, go with the vanilla. If you like a little bit of a coffee-like vibe with the least oud, I think, in that one. It's the least oud, I should say. Uh, definitely the cafe oud. And then, of course, if you like the rose oud combo, go with the rose oud, of course. Anyway, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video, please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.